What do footballers do when they retire? This fella blazed a trail into the media and <laughs> yeah. dozens have followed. But it's not always a happy ending for a former professional footballer. Alan Gurnan has written this really good book. I am part way through, not all the way, but it's fascinating. What happens to footballers when the game is up? Alan joins us um, via FaceTime tonight. Hi, Alan. What's the answer to the question in general? Um, well, good evening, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, it can be pretty bleak, uh, basically. Um, I, I wrote the book because players around the same age as me were retiring, so I just wondered what becomes of the guys that don't go into media or don't go into management. And, you know, there can be a lot of problems which are all interlinked. Um, uh, when, so, sorry, Alan, in your book, when you're talking about, are, are we talking, you know, people listening now would think you can't be talking Premier League players, surely, are you? Yeah, Premier League players, um, there's a chapter on bankruptcies which suggests that um, up to 40% of Premier League players face the threat of bankruptcy within five years. Um, now, I spoke to a lot of players, a lot of financial advisors, agents, and like, the, like bankruptcy lawyers and solvency practitioners, and they've, any bankruptcies they've dealt with involving footballers have mainly been at the Premier League level. Um, because lower down the leagues, they, they don't have as much money to invest, so they don't obviously lose as much. I, but, was, um, I was interested, Alan, uh, uh, reading a quote from Des Walker, who, who happily, after a spell driving lorries, has found his way back into football at Derby County. I think he's uh, working with the youth team. Um, uh, he said, you, you, you don't give football up, football gives you up. You up. Andy Cole, who we were speaking to earlier tonight, uh, he said it's like being in the military. You spend 15 years with the same guys doing the same thing. All of a sudden, nothing. nothing. How much of a problem is that for the guys? It's huge. The amount of people that mentioned that li uh, likened it to the military and the amount of people who mentioned the word bereavement um, re re around their retirement where they're sort of mourning a life that they've known for maybe 30 years from the age of maybe 8 to 38 and uh, it's hard to get their head around. Overnight they, they may go from you know, heroes to zeros. They've lost that identity from the age of 8. They may be known as you know, Andy, for example, the footballer, and then at 38 it's just Andy. And <laughs> Uh, th that seems to, uh, it leads to a lot of problems, whether it's in marriage or addictions or mental health. And uh, on top of that, they may be dealing with injuries or having to have had retired um, prematurely through injury. So, you know, I spoke to some players who retired um, through injury and, you know, it took some of them 10 years maybe to get over it. Is there an answer, Alan, to this? Pardon? Is there, well, is there the an answer? Yeah, there's a lot of players from maybe when the Premier League era started that, you know, they said the help out there was risable and, um, you know, they had no preparation for retirement. The, the likes of the PFA are, are striving to do as much as they can. Uh, other org organisations like Expro, a charity, have been set up to assist um, down in the luck footballers. But there does seem to be uh, a cohort of players that just bury their heads in the sand. Like some players I spoke to and others I mentioned teammates who didn't think about retirement until the day it happened, which, you know, wouldn't happen in any other industry. What about those who get themselves into a bit of trouble? Not, not, not uh, mentally, um, not, not physically, but those... Uh, and, and give us some statistics, the proportion that end up behind bars, Alan. Yeah, um, just as, as at the time of writing early this year, there was 150 former players uh, in the UK uh, penal system, so... 90% of those are under the age of 25 who are guys who um, were signed in academies and were released in maybe their late teens or early 20s. So, you know, they're typically they're earning maybe a grand or two a week. They've suddenly their dream ends. They move back to their, you know, inner city or town and some classmates maybe dealing drugs or something. So it's 90% of those incarcerated for drug offences. So typically, um, it will be couriering drugs, for example, from Newcastle to Liverpool. They may get a grand or a grand and a half for that, which you know sort of tallies with what they had been earning. So uh, it t tends to be the guys between, like, uh, at the age of 16, if you're signed to a professional club in England, um, only 2% are still playing by the age of 21. So there's a huge, it's the first wave of retirees there. Alan, we're reaching the end of this series of Keys and Grey, but this is such an interesting subject. Trust me, we will speak to you come the new season. Um, I, I haven't finished the book yet. As I said, I'm fascinated by what I've read. And uh, thanks very much for talking to us. Great. Thanks for having me thanks, on. Thanks, Alan. Alan, Alan thank you. Alan Gurney, the author of the book, Retired. It is a huge problem. If we had more I time, I'd ask him to tell you what happened to him. I know, I remember. I remember when I, that first day when I woke up and I wasn't a professional footballer anymore. <laughs> it was shocking. I mean, it was shocking.